Gary, welcome. Thank you. Thank you uh, very glad, much. We're glad we're here together to make this this little bit of a video to talk about your mission work and and uh, what you've experienced up to this point. We are so excited at Redeemer to have you uh, going out from Redeemer and and to, to some wonderful places. And so I just wanted to take a minute and ask you a few questions on on uh, your mission work and. I am always glad to talk about God's work. Well, good. So why don't you tell me? <laughs> That's not about me. That's yeah. about God's work. Well, why don't you tell me how you, how did you get started? How did you get interested in mission work? Well, it all really started with Church of the Redeemer. You know, I've always said to anybody that asks of what has happened in my life and most people that are led to serve is no mistake. You know, this is part of God's planning. And I firmly believe that God led me to Church of Redeemer. Um, I uh, got involved and got to know people. And my first experience with uh, mission work was going to Mexico with Bill Lee. Mm -hmm. I've been down there twice. And uh, that is probably the beginning where God's uh, spirit got a hold of me and just tugged me at the heart, which we'll talk about in a few minutes further. But I went down to Mexico, uh, worked with Bill Lee and uh, other Church of the Redeemer um, people working on an orphanage. Um, and this was a short-term mission? This was a short-term yeah. mission. I uh, was during uh, the time that I worked for uh, the hospital so mm -hmm. I would take one or two weeks at a time that was my first time um, I, I just tell a real short story and I've told this before and, and Bill's very familiar with it we were coming out of um, a church in a small town in Mexico and um, I was I got so emotional I just stopped and and Bill I believe Bill knew what was going on mm -hmm. because I just I got emotional I just uh, I, I had to get away from everybody and it, it, it was at that point looking back I knew that was God's Holy Spirit getting into my heart so I went down to Mexico like I said with Bill Lee and, and the organization there uh, and what I would do I would go around to different churches here in Greenville uh, that I was made aware of that they were having mission trips, would it be medical or, you know, uh, church planting. But anyways, I would go to different churches here in Greenville. I have been to uh, Haiti three times. I have been down to Nicaragua, Dominican Republic. And uh, after a while, I started putting out feelers. I went with the uh, Church of God out of Lima, Ohio to Africa. And uh, there's another time uh, that the Holy Spirit got a hold of me because the group, this is part of a medical trip, the group uh, we were uh, actually were getting ready to go into the bush. So we were still in the capital city and we went out into the slums. And when I say slums, there were uh, just dirt floors with a tin roof over the head. And on the floor, we did prayer walking at that time. On the floor was a lady who was dying of AIDS. She was just laying on the dirt. And we prayed over her, and I came out again. And I, that was another time that I was, I just, I was so overcome with emotion. And I looked at the, the pastor, and I said, this is it. This is what God wants me to do. So all along, God's Holy Spirit has been working on me. Now, did you not uh, also take a trip to India? I did. I, was... I went to uh, Calcutta to work with Mother Teresa's sisters over there for two weeks. And it was a, an amazing time with the sisters. I worked in uh, one of their homes. It was the home for the dying and destitute. Mm -hmm. where the uh, sisters and uh, a couple of the volunteers daily would go out into the streets and bring in people that were just dying and we brought them back and in that home I worked of course with the men uh, to bathe them feed them and yeah. pray with them you know to let them know they are not forgotten 
they are valued. Right. And that is something else I'll mention in a few minutes. As well, and, and so you, uh, <coughs> and this is all while you were still employed. Yes. And so you had the time just at, on your vacation time or whatever to go and do these, these mm -hmm. uh, mission trips. But then you retired. I did. And that's a, that's another uh, God story too, because um, uh, I just probably in the matter of two months, God got a tugging on my heart, as I say, mm -hmm. and and I realized this is something that most people cannot do, but uh, I'm under kind of different circumstances uh, because I I do not have anybody in my life. Uh, all family is gone. So what I did was I uh, gave up my life as I knew it mm -hmm. to uh, live and walk as Jesus did. I sold and gave away everything I owned. Yeah. I went to the hospital, gave my resignation, started Social Security, got my pension, and it's like God closed those doors and opened up others. Yeah. It's just a leading that not only I have followed, because I said it's not about me, but everybody that listens and responds to God's Holy Spirit, that's the way he works. And so in the midst of that, God led you to Thailand. He did. I, uh, I didn't know anybody in Thailand. I found a pastor of Calvary International Baptist Church over there. I found uh, uh, his name, he and his wife. And I emailed him and just said I uh, needed a place to serve. And he emailed me, he says, come on over. So I went over and I have been over there three and a half years. And uh, I worked with uh, Pakistani Christian and Sri Lankan Christian missionary or refugees, excuse me, that had to flee uh, Thai, or had to flee Pakistan because of the severe persecution that they received over there and they were they were kind of underground right because they were oh, they are still underground there yeah. they came to um, Thailand because this the uh, biggest influx of refugees coming into Thailand started probably four or five years ago and uh, they came there with a valid uh, tourist visa mm -hmm. tourist visa runs out and of course I won't go into politics or anything like that. The bottom line is they can't, um, uh, they can't get any other kind of visa there. They're there illegally. Mm -hmm. They can't go anywhere else because the UN is backed up, so to speak. And they're just, and they can't go back to Pakistan. They'll be killed. So yes, they are underground. They're hidden all through Bangkok. Um, and so you served that community and helping them with I food, did. And food uh, and needs. I did, alongside um, Calvary Baptist Church yeah. and IMB, part of the uh, Baptist Missionary Organization. I worked alongside them. Uh, we would go out almost daily. and We would go, uh, being hidden throughout the city of Bangkok, uh, they were in uh, usually one room mm -hmm. uh, with six, seven people, family members in a right. room. We would go in and bring food, enough for maybe two weeks, but we went there and we prayed with them. Uh, we ate meals with them. Um, and, and one of the greatest blessings for me was I saw what true dependence on God is. They had nothing like most people there's all a little something in between, right. you know, yourself and God. They had nothing. All they could do was depend on the Lord for protection and provision. Uh, their faith is, is amazing. Um, a lot of times we would uh, discuss scripture. Uh, it was just an amazing thing. It, it sounds powerful. Yeah, it was. So, it, it is. And how, did, and how did you fund yourself when you were in Thailand? I uh, am what I call self-funding. I use my Social Security and my pension uh, to fund. God has provided that for me, and uh, that's what I use totally. But it, it didn't give you a lot of extra, did it? No, it didn't. But uh, when you live in one room and you basically have clothes, you really don't, and you can see I'm not, a large guy so I don't eat a lot uh, you know I had the essentials mm -hmm. and the blessings 
that went along with it. Well, I'm sure that you blessed a lot of people over there, and and and, and <clears throat> were blessed yourself. Oh, uh, very blessed from that work. And so you came to the end of your your three years, or at least I assume at some point along that line, you you started feeling the stirring of. I of did. God. It's that tugging on the heart that I don't yeah. ignore. Mm -hmm. I did, and um, I had not been back to. Uh, the states for about three and a half years and so I came back I believe it was last June or July and I had mentioned to you in an email that I had this tugging on the heart not that I was unhappy with serving uh, in, in Thailand and you said not you need to you need to look into this organization um, called uh, I teams or International Teams Mission, now known as One Collective. Um, and I said, yeah, okay. Well, this is another God thing because I had no idea that uh, iTeams had a representative here in Greenville. So through your help, I contacted him. And again, I didn't realize that Church of the Redeemer uh, had established quite a long time ago um, uh, a relationship with uh, I teams, so that's when I began to uh, put the application in, and through the past three, four months, I got accepted um, as a missionary to the Ukraine. So tell us about that. What what's okay. your work going to be like there? I uh, have I will be going over for three years. And I will be working in a city in the southwestern part of the country, bordering Slovakia. Um, I will be working with, uh, they have three main ministries there. Uh, one is uh, orphanage um, with uh, children and uh, uh, babies that have been abandoned because uh, they still have a war there going on in Crimea, in Ukraine. So there's a lot of internally displaced people. Then they have a university ministry. And then they have a Roma Gypsy ministry. And that is what I have been asked to uh, be involved with. There are five camps outside of the city that uh, I will be working with. Um, let me back up a little bit <clears throat> and explain to you, and this really goes right along with Church of the Redeemer's vision, although it's not put the same way, but uh, that's one of the reasons why I believe I was brought to the Church of the Redeemer. But one collective or I team believes that um, nobody needs to be forgotten. Every human life needs to be valued. Everybody needs access to food, freedom, and forgiveness. They are a non-denominational um, organization. Um, uh, we are followers of Christ. We're not, uh, I am Church of the Redeemer's miss missionary first, but I'm also part of uh, one collective. And um, so many people are forgotten, they're persecuted, they're oppressed. Um, and it's not that people don't think about them, um, it's just with some other parts of society, they're just kind of put aside. You know, don't think about them or anything. But there is a need. They are people. They're human beings. Um, what I have dedicated myself to for the rest of my life is living and working as Jesus did. And this has given me the opportunity. That's great. And so you'll be working with uh, uh, the third part of that three-leg yes. mission in Ukraine yeah. to these, these camps mm -hmm. of displaced people. And so. bringing food and assistance and Christ. And Christ. To them. Christ. You know, we have both talked about that um, you can 
open more doors to the gospel uh, when you talk about Christ. Uh, it's my experience, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's my experience that sometimes doors shut with people or any kind of person who has doesn't have Christ. The doors are shut when you bring in certain denominations or organized Christian religions. Um, what I have found that is if you bring up Jesus, for example, with the Muslims, um, they know Jesus. Their Quran, their holy book, talks about Jesus. So, I mean, they will... They won't shut the door, you know, uh, with with anybody who is downtrodden, uh, who even has a little bit of an idea about Jesus and what he does. They will hopefully see Jesus in our hearts and know that we love them because they're one of God's people. Well, I get kind of emotional well, when I yeah, but talk it, about this. Yeah. I really it do. sounds exciting, and, and I know it's, it's something that you've, dedicated the rest of your life to mm -hmm. and and that's that's really admirable uh, when when do you leave I have gotten just about all the requirements done I'm waiting for the home office I sent a note this morning to uh, uh, they've got to clear me because there's a lot of paperwork and requirements yeah. but I'm hoping to take off maybe in about two or three weeks which would be the, in April, early April. Yeah, early April. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've got to be over there at least by the 8th of April. So everything's progressing, but you know, I always have to remind myself it's not my time, it's God's time. Amen. Amen. <laughs> uh, and and uh, with this mission uh, assignment by God that you're, you're on, uh, tell me a little bit about the funding that's needed for that. Okay. I, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I uh, fund myself, my living expenses, everything that goes along with it is my uh, Social Security, my pension. Uh, there is a little bit above that that I just cannot meet. Um, so I do need uh, funding, but whether, whether somebody gives money, which of course would be nice, but it's the fact that people can in, uh, join with me on a walk. It's not my walk. It's anybody's walk. They can walk with me as I walk as Christ did. Um, just to have somebody pray for me, pray for the Church of Redeemer, uh, thank Church of the Redeemer for the blessings, and, and uh, just be with me. You know, you can walk the walk. It's not an individual. It's the people and in their heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And hopefully as you get situated out there you'll have some means of electronically uh, bringing updates to... <laughs> yes, I have. I've been thrown into the 21st century. As anybody knows me, I'm not a tech person, but uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's, that's only uh, uh, right. People mm -hmm. that uh, take a walk with you uh, in the world, whether it be here in the United States, and, and iTeams has working, is working in the United States, mm -hmm. wherever it is. They need regular updates. They want to be able to see and hear, ah, this is it. This is what it means to walk with Christ. This right. is what it means to, to uh, show Christ's love. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, and uh, we're hoping that uh, with people hearing your story, both in the past and how God stirred your heart and, and got you into the mission field and how upon retirement you dedicated your life to it, we hope they will help. Mm -hmm. and, and, and whether it be with financial assistance or whether it be with uh, their prayers, right. you know, they're equally powerful. Oh, and, yeah. And we hope that they'll, they'll do that and, and in order to get you on your way and support you in your mission out there. Well, thank you. We just, you know, we are we are thrilled to be part of it. We're thrilled at Redeemer to be walking along with you on this. Mm -hmm. And and we look forward in the future to be receiving updates and oh, you will. and uh, 
and just take the joy that you're going to be experiencing as you do your work. It's contagious. It is contagious. Yeah. Gary, thank you. Thank Bye. you, Father Scott. Thank you.